considered a problem for most religious believers. They think that heaven is a good place, they're happy with that. Or, um, the uh, soul is in a limbo state for a period of time. Then that's really just down to a person's individual choice. You know, are you willing to put it with being in a limbo state for a period of time in order to come back and continue enjoying your life? Um, ultimately, maybe the transmigration of souls is correct. Um, like uh, Buddhists and Hindus believe. Well, if that's the case, then you know the soul can flutter off, find another body, and no harm has really actually come about by the uh, initial body there being cryopreserved. Um, people will say, what about overcrowding? This is a big one. Um, <clears throat> you know, the world is filling up. We have too few resources already to um, cater for the people who are around. Isn't it selfish that you want to um, stick around? Um, I think Aubrey de Grey has uh, a nice line on this for any who are not familiar with uh, the man who's a um, geneticist at uh, Cambridge who's uh, the forefront of uh, life extension and anti-aging research from a, a genetic perspective. And he says that this is actually a good argument and that none of the answers that he's heard really answer it. You know, people say, oh, we'll mass emigrate into space. We'll create more efficient systems, you know, to uh, uh, provide for everybody. Um, and, you know, maybe those things will be possible. Maybe they won't. Um, but ultimately, um, I don't feel that I should need to commit suicide in order to uh, make room for somebody else. Maybe I'm selfish for that, maybe not. And if I am selfish for that, then I invite people to look at the surface area taken up by an Alcor cryostat. It's about this thick. And to look at the plot of an average grave in a cemetery. It's, you know, takes up six feet, three feet, maybe more if it's an ostentatious grave. Um, actually, I was flying over New York recently um, on a trip home and I noticed a huge, huge sprawling cemetery. It's practically, you know, a chunk of the city. I think that's taking up space unnecessarily. Um, I'm still using this space, uh, and I tend to continue doing so. So, in the meantime, I agree with Aubrey Gray's perspective, and uh, perhaps you would as well, that um, if it's uh, not an argument that's so important that we shouldn't look at saving 150,000 lives a day, that, that's approximately how many people die on any given day around the world based on... Uh, the uh, statistics. Um, incidentally, if you go to deathclock.com, you can see uh, uh, recent updates on that based on the calculations from the past trends. It's actually quite quite fun to watch the number ticking along. Um, so, yeah, there are problems with regards to overcrowding. These are problems to which we do not yet have solutions. Um, I simply think that they're problems that we should look at being around to solve rather than simply um, saying, oh well, yeah, that is a problem, we better die. Because dying isn't the solution to problems, in my opinion. What about awakening alone in a strange world? Uh, a lot of people say this, and uh, it may be a, a major consideration for a lot of people. You know, um, the world is changing. Uh, transhumanist more than anybody, you'll be aware of how quickly this change is occurring and how quickly it is accelerating. Now, it may well be that people in cryopreservation are reanimated in 20 years, 50 years, 100 years even, um, and that the world has changed by a huge, huge amount. Sounds like fun to me. Uh, some people may find it scary, some people may think, I won't know anybody. Well. There are, there are a couple of possibilities there. One, maybe I won't know anybody. I'll make new friends. Uh, I'm not that bad uh, that I can't make, can't make new friends. Um, or even if my social skills were really that poor, I would actually prefer a life by myself than no life at all. Um, ultimately, um, all my nearest and dearest are actually cryonicists. Um, and the reason for this is um, more than coincidental. It's quite simply that people who are going to invest enough energy in themselves and those like themselves to live forever, 
that's actually a more meaningful long-term relationship. Um, and there are a few um, Quranists in the room here. These are people that I expect to know for a very, very long time. Um, you know, people will die around me. There are people I care about dearly um, who are going to die in a couple of decades. Frankly, because I work in health and social care, there are people that I care about dearly who will die in six months, a year, two years. I will be sad. I will miss them. I'm not going to be suicidal about it. Um, I think that the main thing about that problem with cryonics is uh, what about awakening alone in a strange world is really an issue of priorities. I think it's a problem. I don't think it's as big a problem as the of crowning. Um, but it's not a problem that needs to be uh, the kind of problem you're going to commit suicide over. Um, more importantly, and um, uh, David mentioned when he uh, introduced this talk, uh, looking at some of the uh, practical considerations, you know, biologically and physically, and also simply administratively, will it work? What about resource stability? Uh, you know, the world is fast running out of resources, and people are uh, going to war over them, and, um, you know, driving up prices over them. And essentially, you know, who's going to be, you know, investing those resources in the sustaining, uh, in sustaining a cryonics facility for some people that, you know, there's maybe nobody left alive who, who cares about them, who, who knew them. Um, there are a couple of major considerations with that. One, um, actually doesn't take that much resources to sustain a cryonics facility. Um, people uh, think about, uh, you know, power cuts. Oh, you know, you'll come out of deep freeze. Then, you know, if there's a power cut, it's, it's really... Um, I may be preaching to the choir here when I mention the level that uh, technology is at, but it, it's not like a freezer in your kitchen. Um, it's going to take a lot longer to uh, heat up. And it's not going to happen because the cryonics facilities in Michigan and in Arizona... Arizona? Who puts a cryonics facility in a desert? But, um, it works. Um, they don't actually have... Um, any need for a constant supply of electricity to them um, or any other constant monitoring beyond an occasional top-up of um, liquid nitrogen. Uh, the reason that this is so is because um, within the cryostat, um, the uh, person in the middle, liquid nitrogen, and then what is essentially a um, glorified thermos flask around the outside edge. Um, now, Liquid nitrogen inside, it's got a very slight um, burn-off vents, so you have a nice little uh, trail of uh, the uh, gaseous nitrogen coming out. It takes a very long time to run down, and when it gets down to a certain level, they just top it up. That's a, a physical batch process. It's not anything that can actually cut out unless they run out of liquid nitrogen. Um, there are a lot of resources that are um, at a great premium, you know, oil is running out. Now, I actually didn't take chemistry past um, the age of 16 in school, but nitrogen, I seem to recall, isn't actually at a premium. Um, there seems to be plenty of that about. Um, what about facility security? Um, now, I don't mean that in the sense of, um, you know, guards at the door. Though that is actually, to one extent, a consideration and a, uh, one of the issues that cryonics does face that I actually hadn't included in this, um, probably because it slipped my mind when I was creating the slide, um, is there are um, some fundamentalist um, religious people who will blow up abortion clinics because they think that it's evil. Um, there are fundamentalist religious people who think that the idea of wanting to live forever is uh, Blasphemy uh, is blas blasphemous, is hubris, and is a crime against God. So, you know, there is a potential threat there if um, those people were to uh, take the same kind of actions as the uh, fundamentalists who will uh, uh, blow up abortion clinics. That is um, something where to date we've um, simply had a clean running. Um, it's an issue that people are aware of as a potential problem. It's not something that we have.